be the first to say it. Fusion is a complicated program, but if you start to understand some of its core features like expressions, you can start making Fusion do the hard work and solving all of the issues and doing the complicated tasks for you. Before I dive into how expressions work and how you can use it in your project, I want to take a look at some of the examples of what is possible with expressions. The first example, and one that I'm really familiar with, is a bunch of the packs that I have created for DaVinci Resolve. Expressions are so useful when it comes to making templates, when it comes to making them responsive, making them timeable, and all sorts of other cool features that you can use only with the power of expressions. Let's take a look at this title that I worked on from BR Media. It's linked down below if you want to take a look at the whole pack. This title has a lot of cool stuff going on. First off, it's animated. Next, I have some controls off in the inspector. Like I can change the position of it, I can change the angle at which it is slanted, and just with that one control it updates all the text, it updates the box, everything. And then I can also change the text padding, and all of this will also update the animations so that the animations don't get screwed up. I can also come down to the animation controls, and I can toggle whether it animates in, it animates out, and how many frames the animation lasts. And all of that's done with expressions. There is not a single keyframe in this preset. There is another upcoming pack for BR Media, it's called Anim Suite. The pack is a collection of animation presets that are designed to save you time when creating animations in DaVinci Resolve. I have been using those animations throughout this entire video, and to sum it up, each preset is constantly calculating where the text is on the position, where the animation needs to be at the end, in the beginning, and then figuring out when it needs to actually animate. Just like this title, there are no keyframes in the entire preset. You can also use a drop down menu to change the direction of the actual animation. So I could have it slide up, slide down, left, right, all in one preset. Another really good example comes from another DaVinci Resolve teacher named Patrick Sterling. For one of his presets, he took this huge node graph and was able to simplify it to just two nodes using one expression. That's some pretty cool stuff and really highlights the capabilities of expressions and how, how much easier it can make it for you. By simply understanding how they can work, you can use and modify them for your own projects. And while the best examples of expressions are in templates and presets and all that good stuff, they are also very beneficial in your day-to-day -day Fusion workflows. Let's take a look at how they work. So let's start with adding an expression, and this is the easiest part. Let's say I want to add an expression to the Y size. All I have to do is right click and then do expression. Alternatively, I can also go into the, the value box here and type the equal sign and hit enter. Now, I always right click because that's easiest for me. And also, if you right click again, you can hit remove expression to take it away. Anyways, now that you've added an expression, you can see the expression box appear below the control. You also have this little plus sign, which is a pick whip tool. What that allows you to do is drag it over onto any other control and it'll instantly link those two controls together. You can also link multiple controls. So let's say I do X size and then do plus sign. And then I use the pick whip again and connect it to angle. Now it is adding those two values together and that is returning the Y size. Referencing controls is used all the time and you can create some really cool stuff with it. So let's talk about all the ways that you can do that. So to reference a control, you can either use the pick whip tool or you can type it. Usually I end up typing it. Anytime I want to reference a tool in the same node, all I have to do is type the name of that tool. For example, X size. And now that I've typed that, I can hit enter and it is applied the expression. So now when I use the X size, it'll also move the Y size since they are linked together. But I can also link controls that are in other nodes. And the way you do that is by putting the name of the node first. Let's say I do text1.size. You see, that's gonna set it to be really small. But now if I go over to the text control and change the size, it'll also scale up the Y if I, if I drag this up. If you ever don't know why your control is not linking properly or what to type in, if you go over and hover on any of these controls, down in the bottom left, you can see exactly what you need to type to reference that control. But now that you have referenced a control, there's a lot more you can do with it. Inside of an expression box, you can do any math that you want. For example, I could times this by four. So now it's going to be a little bit bigger to start. And then once I scale it up, it's going to really start to stretch. I could also type in X size and then put it to the power of two. And now when I change the X size, as you can see, it'll, it'll create a kind of funky animation right there. Anytime that you want to reference a point control, so for example, the center X and Y or pivot X and Y, all you need to do is add dot X or dot Y to the end of the control. For example, if I want to connect the Y size to the Y position, I could do center dot y. And now whenever I move this center dot y, it's also going to adjust the y size. So now that you understand the very basics of how they how they work and you can actually add and use them, let's take a look at some of the other stuff that you can reference inside of a fusion composition. Not only can you reference certain controls, but you can also reference certain parameters of the composition. For example, if I right click on the angle and do expression, I can type in comp dot render end and it will return the last frame of the composition, which if you look off to the side here is 119 and the angle is set to 
119. I can also type in time and that returns the value of the current frame. So whatever is in this box, that's what the angle is going to be set to. So over the duration of the composition, I can have it rotating. Now this is cool and all, but what if I wanted to go from 0 to 360 in the angle control over the, the duration of the composition? What I can do is do time divided by comp.renderEnd. So that will keep the value between 0 and 1. 0 being the beginning of the composition and 1 being the end of the composition. And now I can multiply this by whatever value I want it to be at the end. So 360. At the first frame, it's going to be 0. And at the last frame, it is going to reach a full rotation of 360 degrees. So you see, that was really easy to set up. But now it is doing a perfect rotation. And no matter what the length of the composition is, it will automatically update that so that at the beginning, it's at 0. And at the end, it's at 360. Expressions are really cool. Now there's a lot of different parameters and stuff that you can reference in Fusion, and I do not have time to go over all of those in this video. So I'm going to link a great resource by William Justice down below. It kind of highlights a lot of the most commonly used ones and gives you a little explanation as to how to use it. You can mix and match these expressions to create something that is unique for your project. While a lot of those expressions are pretty easy to understand, I want to take a look at one specifically. One of the most powerful expressions in Fusion, and one that requires a little more explaining. That's going to be the if expression. It allows you to change what the expression is based on a condition. Here is a very basic one. If the time is greater than the ending frame divided by two, then it will return one, otherwise it will return zero. This is great if you're working on a transition and you want it to switch between two clips right in the middle of the composition, no matter what the length of it is. So let's break this down a little bit. First thing you'll notice is if is spelled with two I's, and that is extremely important. If you don't do this, it's not going to work, so don't even try it. Two I's all the time. Now we have the opening and closing parentheses, also very important. Everything in between those two parentheses is going to be your if expression. And then finally, we see two commas, dividing it into three different sections. So the first section is going to be the condition. And if the condition is true, it's going to return what is in the second section. And then if it is not true, it's going to return what's in the third section. So in this case, if the playhead is halfway through the composition, it's going to return 1. Otherwise, it's going to return 0. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you're trying to do an equals to expression, for example, if time is equal to 30, you need to use two equal signs. Otherwise, it won't work. Just with the two i's, you need two equal signs. Another thing that you can do is nest if expressions inside of each other. So you could do if this checkbox is selected and then if the time is greater than this. And you can keep putting more if expressions inside of other if expressions and that gets a little messy sometimes and a little bit complicated. So don't start out with that off the bat. And instead of just using one or zero in the actual expression, you can use any expressions you want. So just like the ones that we were talking about earlier in the video. Now, I know what you're thinking. This video is done already? Well, sadly, yes. There is just too much to explain about expressions and I can't cover it all in this one video. This video is meant only to scratch the surface about expressions and teach you the very basics of how they work and how you can use them in Fusion. I didn't want to overwhelm you with a 45 minute video just talking about code the entire time. I would encourage you to play around with expressions on your own, checking out that cheat sheet for William Justice, and then just messing around with them in Fusion, and I'd love to see what you come up with. I run the DaVinci Resolve Discord server, which is a spot that you can ask and answer questions about DaVinci Resolve, as well as share your work. So check that out down in the link down below, and you can check out the Fusion section so you can ask and answer questions about the expressions, and then get one-on-one -on -one help from people who are really good at this stuff. And then also, if you come up with a cool expression, let me know and I'll take a look at it. I hope to make many more videos about expressions in the future, but for now, check out this video on a circle graph. I used a bunch of expressions to make this really easy to use and super powerful. Now that you understand the basics, this is the next step.